Man, the sky looks beautiful this morning. It isn't quite sunrise, but the clouds and the sun are just hitting perfectly today. Still got a solid 10 minutes before sunrise, but the Lord is certainly painting a beautiful picture this morning. There it is, another gorgeous sunrise to start another beautiful Sunday. I love getting that morning light therapy and that cloud coverage and haze is just enough to make it possible. <sighs> yeah, I tell you, getting that light therapy is more refreshing than coffee ever was for me. It really is like I can feel my brain waking up when I do that. It's so awesome. Thank you, Dr. Huberman, for sharing that one with me. Hey, I want to welcome all the new subscribers since I put out my two-year carniversary video. Jeez, it's been the highest spike I've had in subscribers ever since I started. So all I can say is I'm truly grateful you're here. You know, I consider it an honor and a responsibility to have the audience that I have. I never would have thought when I started recording videos on this almost two years ago, well over two years ago I started recording, but I didn't release the first one until May of 2021. And my intention was just to release that one video because I figured, hey, I'll show the weight loss I did in these six weeks. But when I pressed on past six weeks, I wound up doing the video on 125 days on Lion Diet. And I got such a great response to that video, I just decided to keep on going and making videos and talking about this. And I'm glad I did. You know, when I started, I didn't know anything about there being a carnivore community or anything like that on YouTube. I just heard about it through Dr. Jordan Peterson, watching some of his videos, finding out that he was eating an all meat diet. I thought, well, that's interesting because I knew that uh, low carb was a good way to go, but I didn't know you could go completely meat. So that's what started all this off. So I'm just grateful to have every one of you here. Thank you for subscribing and for sharing this with your friends so that they can see what the regular man trying to go through this diet is like. I'm glad to be able to fill the gap for that. There's so many doctors out there on YouTube that talk about all the great benefits of carnivore diet, but sometimes it's nice just to see some evidence of your own. And I've got two years worth recorded out here on YouTube for you to watch. I'm going to try to go back and put some of these into some condensed forms because a lot of you new subscribers want to know things that my longtime subscribers already know because they've been watching. And I realize I need to make some compilation videos that show everything that's been going on. And uh, well, before I move on to what I, I came to talk to you about today, I also want to thank my new patrons on Patreon, Marcy Goodwin and Jeff Hunter. It's such a blessing to have people that are willing to support what I'm trying to do here. And what I'm trying to do here is encourage you to get healthy. Encourage you to take back your life. To break free from the system, from the chains that are put on you by all the advertising and big food and big pharma and all the stuff out there that's taking over our lives. Governments and just all the mess. And stop focusing on all that stuff. Start focusing on living again. I know I am. <laughs> it's a great way to live. Now, the thing I wanted to come address is what has become the elephant in the room when it comes to especially new subscribers who aren't used to seeing the transformation I've gone through. The question I get a lot now is, what happened to your hair? Does this diet make your hair fall out? <laughs> and I got to tell you, you know, it's something that I was never comfortable talking about before this diet. But this one of the things this diet has done for me is helped me to let go of a lot of insecurities. When I was, uh-oh, uh Sam's got a burr. Let me take it out of his foot, hold on. Yeah, say hi to my buddy Sam. He's, uh, he's been my walking partner now for a little over, almost two years, a year and a half. Ever since he joined me on a walk one day while I was out doing this and recording for you guys. But anyway, as I was saying about my hair, you know, I, I started losing, having a receding hairline when I was very young. I've shown you pictures of when I was a kid and I had a decent sized forehead even then. But I remember by the time I got to my 20s, I was working at this store, the electronics store in Texas. And there was a guy there and he was completely bald so he could say this without any problem. I remember him commenting on something and I don't know exactly what led him to say this, but he commented on my forehead looking like a Buick bumper. <laughs> And, you know, that always kind of bothered me, but at the same time, I liked the guy, so I got a little laugh out of it. But I didn't want to think about losing my hair in my 20s, my goodness. My father lived into his 60s and never lost his hair. My mother's side of the family, though, they seem to have the gene. 
because both of my brothers on my mother's side have had hair loss, one of them more than the other. And uh, I just kind of knew it was coming. So at some point in my life, I don't remember when, I told myself, you know what? I, I see people with these comb overs and they're trying to hide bald spots and all kind of stuff. If I ever start to lose my hair like that, I'm just gonna shave it off completely. And to be honest, I didn't start right away when I found out because I've always had big cow licks on the back of my head. Had a lot of spirals, on, you know, where the hair comes out and causes the hair not to lay down right. And there was always a gap between them because it was like five little hurricanes going against each other. And right in the center was the calm spot where there was no hair because all the hair was being pushed away from that center. So when I get, I got told, you're losing your hair, you're getting a bald spot, I said, no, that's just a cowlick. It's not, it's not what you think. It looks like that, but it's not. And even when I would see pictures of it, I would think, really, man, is that, that thing's really big. That cowlick is getting big. I would never admit it to myself that I was losing that hair. And honestly, it wasn't really until I, I started growing my hair long that uh, I couldn't avoid it anymore. As a matter of fact, in, in the earlier videos I was doing, I was already hiding it the best I could because I still wasn't admitting to myself that I was going bald. I was just saying, darn that thing, it's just so obvious with my long hair. It was definitely a bald spot and I didn't admit it until, and I'm hoping I can find pictures to show you some progression on all this because I'll be honest with you, up until recently, I was very careful about curating my photos. I didn't want to show my gut. I didn't want to show my, the back of my head. So I was very careful not to include things that I didn't want to show. Insecurities can be a real pain in the butt, especially when I'm trying to reveal to you exactly what's going on. But, you know, I know a lot of you guys deal with insecurities because I know what it's like. I mean, I, I also can look around and see how many people are affected by the horrible diet that we have in this, this country and around the world with what's been done to our food supply. Everybody's trying to eat healthy and they're just eating more and more sugar and getting fatter and fatter. And that doesn't help with our insecurities either. But anyway, it wasn't until I sat down in my bathroom one day and took a picture of the back of my head with my phone and I was just flabbergasted at how much hair was not there. I had no clue that it was that bad. And I was growing my hair and one of the things I decided I was gonna do is I was gonna donate that hair to childrenwithhairloss.com. And that was kind of my excuse because a lot of people in my neighborhood were a little bit, you know, iffy about somebody having long hair. And I had never had long hair in my life and I thought, I'm just gonna try it. I wanna see what it's like to have long hair. And I didn't wanna have to hear their, their nitpicking about me having long hair for whatever reason, whether there's their religious beliefs or who knows what, but I get it because I was always a military fan and I, I understand it. I like the idea of having a nice close clop close cropped haircut. But I didn't want to have to deal with all that nonsense all the time, so I just made sure people knew that I'm doing this for charity. It wasn't the reason I started growing my hair that way, but it was the reason I used, and I did plan to actually donate it to children with hair loss. But after I realized that I was losing my hair back there, I decided to go to he see a hair salon tech that a friend of mine who had done the same thing, he had grown his hair and given it to childrenwithhairloss.com which by the way is a great organization if you want to donate your hair for something like that because they don't actually charge the people for the hair like some of the other ones do. Anyway, I went to the hairstylist and when she saw how it looked after it had grown, she said, yeah, they're, they're not gonna take that. <laughs> that's, uh, that's looking pretty rough, especially in the back. And I could see it, I just didn't want to admit it. And shortly after that, I think within a couple of days, I went and got my hair cut. That was during my doing this video, but I had been losing my hair for a long time. And then also people that would point out that my hair was graying. My hair was graying long before I started doing this diet. It's just that I had very dark hair for a long time. I used to get told in my 30s that I dyed my hair because it was so dark, but I've never used hair dye. Around the time I started growing my hair out was before I started the diet. And you could see if I pulled it out from the sides, it looked like wings, silver wings practically. This, had, this was a long train coming. 
and I'm just hitting that age. I was 48 when I started the diet and I'm 50 now. So it's just a part of life. Now some people say that they've actually had their hair regrow or get darker on this diet. I don't know that for a fact. I haven't really seen evidence of that myself. And to be honest, because I've cut it so short ever since then, I just, I haven't been paying attention to it. But it's not something I'm worried about because, you know, I kept a beard for a long time too. And that's something that dealt with an insecurity. I grew a beard simply because I thought it would hide some of the way my face looked fat. I never said that to anybody, but I know what I was thinking. I was hoping that I could keep this from looking so big. And it was an easy way to hide it, I thought. When I look at pictures of me now from back then, I realize I wasn't hiding anything. I was just giving myself some comfort. Just like we do with a lot of the foods and drugs and other things that we take and alcohol that we use to cope with life. It was just one more coping mechanism. And when I decided to shave my head, I said, you know what, why not shave my beard too? I'm not hiding anymore. I'm proud of the way I look. I mean, I'm no, I know I'm no model or anything. I'm not the best looking guy in the world, but at least I'm not ashamed of the way I look anymore. I'm not ashamed of the fact that I felt like people would just see a fat guy that didn't have any control over what he ate, no matter how hard I tried to control what I eat. So it's just an easy thing for you to do when you feel that way, is you grow, grow a beard, grow some long hair, and see if you can hide what you're trying to hide. I don't mean to put anybody down out there who's doing that right now, but it's what I went through, and I'm sure there are some of you going through it, and you might not like me pointing it out, but it is what it is. There was a meme I shared the other day on our Facebook page, the Ferrigno Freedom group that I created, and we have a lot of folks coming together so they can talk about these very kind of issues. But I shared a meme the other day that I saw that showed a, two different offices that you could go to. One of them had a line from here to the moon of people waiting in it. The other one had no people in line. The one that showed the people waiting in line said, if you want a pill to change things, this is the line to be in. And then the other line was for lifestyle changes. Nobody wants to do a lifestyle change. Everybody's looking for that quick fix. And I'm gonna tell you there is no quick fix. Although, lion diet has been the quickest fix I ever found. It definitely turned things around for me fast. I mean, I lost the majority of my weight in the first 125 days. And what I've done since then is just tighten up. Tightened up loose skin, tightened up my body, and I feel so much better than I ever have in my life. Although lately, I will say my work has been rough on me. I mean, I'm doing the job an 18-year-old should be doing, and uh, it's been rough on my back. Thank you to those who have suggested things like massage therapy and chiropractic and acupuncture. I would love to do all of those things, but I really don't have the means to do all of that right now. I'm still waiting on some insurance to kick in to begin with so that I can get some things done without having to spend so much. But I did go and get a massage yesterday, and I've got to tell you, she was fantastic. She worked on, for 90 minutes, the upper part of my back where the problem was that was causing me to, when I lay at bed at night, no matter if I laid on my side or my back, within about a half hour or so, my arms and hands were completely numb and in so much pain, it would wake me back up and I'd have to readjust. I found that laying on my face on top of two pillows with my face not resting on a pillow was the only way that I could rest. So the next morning I decided I gotta go get something done about this. And even though it cost the equivalent of seven hours of my work day, it was worth every penny. She did such a fantastic job on my upper back for those whole 90 minutes that I don't have any pain going on in my upper back right now. And the numbness is almost completely gone. I've had a couple of moments last night where my right hand was a little numb, but my whole arms were going numb before. So it's much better. It's much better. And I'm hoping I can go see her again soon. And even though I know a lot of you don't live in this area in Central Florida, I went to see uh, a therapist named Kim who owns the shop Grace for Today in Donellan, Florida. If you are looking for an excellent massage therapist and you live in the area, I encourage you to give them a call because she really knows her stuff. Unlike other massage th therapists or m massage parlors I've been to where it seems like they were there for a very different reason than trying to help do any real healing. 
she was able to give me the healing I was looking for. And I'm grateful for that. Well, that's all I've got to say for today. I just wanted to let you guys know that the haircut was a choice. And I'm happy with it. No matter how ugly I look. <laughs> I'm still thankful to be able to cut my hair and not feel like I have to hide anything. So... Oh, and the reason why I didn't wear my Rux vest today is I am trying to take care of that back that she just took care of for me. I'll give it a little bit more time. Matter of fact, the other parts of my body that had, were hurting a lot less, they're all much more pronounced today because my upper back feels so good. So I still gotta work on my lower back some. Oh, also the house is coming along. They finally got the siding and the roof on. So we're making some progress. Anyway. I'll see you guys next time. I got lots more to say, so stick around. Screw it, get up and do it. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?